hi dear students we'll today discuss about u train tube or the fallopian tube okay. let's see its introduction u train tubes are also called fallopian tubes or they are also called oviducts and these are present on both side of the uterus on either side of the uterus these tubes which are present on both side of the uterus and they are attached to the uterus between the fundus and the body it is attached to the uterus between the fundus and the body they have their attachment to the uterus between the fundus and the body fundus is the dome shaped upper part of the uterus and the middle part of the uterus is its body so this is attached to the uterus between the fundus and the body okay it is about 10 cm long the length of the uterine, uterine tube is about uh, uh, 10 cm it's about 10 cm long and is less than 1 cm in diameter the diameter of the the, the diameter of the uterus is um, sorry uterine tube the diameter of the uterine tube is less than 1 cm okay. the inner lining is uh, uh, lined with the ciliated epithelium the innermost lining in the innermost lining of the uterine tube is of a ciliated columnar epithelium okay so here you can see the uterine tubes on both sides it is about 10 cm long and 1 cm in diameter and its diameter varies the diameter of the lumen vary considerably lumen is a hole passing through the center of the uterine tube and the diameter of the lumen vary yeah, differ considerably and it is less than 1 mm at its opening into the uterine cavity where it opens into the uterine cavity here the diameter is uh, is very uh, less even it is one millimeter and the lateral ends opens into the peritoneal cavity the lateral end of uh, the uterine tubes they opens into the peritoneal cavity and the, there are finger like structures on the ends and they are called uh, fimbriae there are finger like projections uh, finger like structures on its ends these are these finger like projections on its ends are called fimbriae they are called fimbriae and uh, they capture ova from the surface of the ovary their function is to capture the ova released by the ovary uh, ovum which has been released by the ovary will be captured uh, will be caught by the fimbriae and this moves uh, uh, the ovum into the fallopian tube into the uterine tube so they capture the ovum from the surface of the ovary and uh, the longest of the fimbriae longest among them is called ovarian fimbriae uh, fimbriae which is the longest in that is ovarian fimbriae okay so in the introduction we have seen these are also known as fallopian tube or ovidex and uh, they are present on both side of the on both side of the uterus and that their lateral uh, and attached to the uterus between the fundus and the body of the uterus and this is 10 cm long and is less than 1 cm in diameter and the innermost lining is uh, of uh, uh, ciliated columnar epithelium and uh, diameter of its lumen may differ um, very considerably and it is less than one millimeter at its opening into the uterine cavity and the lateral ends opens into the peritoneal cavity and in uh, in its lateral end uh, there are uh, there are uh, finger like projections and those structures are called fimbriae and they capture the ovum from the surface of the ovary and the, la the longest fimbriae among them is called uh, ovarian fimbriae let's now discuss about its parts okay. Okay. 
begin now. Um, uh, see five parts in that. One is the first one is uh, fimbria, as we discussed. Fimbria are finger-like projections. They are the finger-like projections. These finger-like projections on the lateral ends of the uterine tube. They are called fimbria, and uh, they catch the ovum from the surface of the ovary. Their function is to catch the ovum from the surface of the ovary. They catch the ovum from the surface and the ovum enters into the uterine tube. So, then the next part we are going to discuss is infundibulum. Infundibulum is the funnel shaped op opening. This funnel shaped opening, uh, this part is the infundibulum. The funnel shaped opening near to the ovary and which is present so close to the ovary and uh, to this in infundibulum the fimbriae are attached the fimbriae are attached to the infundibulum so infundibulum is a dilated part and which is present so close to the ovary and uh, this is the part to which the um, fimbriae are attached the next part we are going to discuss is ampulla this one ampulla this part is its ampulla and uh, this is the widest section of the uterine tube the widest which has the largest diameter the widest section of the uterine tube and fertilization usually takes place here in the ampulla so the fertilization takes place here in the ampulla of the uterus which is the widest in diameter and uh, the isthmus next part of the uh, uterine tube is isthmus and this is a narrow section of the uterine tube and this isthmus here you can see this part the isthmus which is the narrow portion or the section the narrow section of the uterus uh, sorry uterine tube and this connects the ampulla to the uterine cavity this is connecting this ampulla into the uterine cavity so this is connecting it with the uterine cavity that connection is called uh, isthmus and the next is intramural uh, part intramural and this is the part which is present within the myometrium of the uterus this is this part where it um, enters or joins with the uterus or the uterine cavity and that is intramural part intramural this is the part which is present within the myometrium of the uterus and it enters into the uterine cavity so the parts include the first one fim fimbria the finger like projections which are present so close to the ovary and they catch the ovum from the ovary then the second is uh, infundibulum which is the funnel shaped part near to the ovary and to which the fimbria are attached and the third one is ampulla the widest section of the uterine tube where the fertilization usually takes place and uh, the fourth one the isthmus which connects the ampulla with the uh, uterus uterine cavity and narrow section of the uterine tube and the fifth one is intramural part uh, which is present within the myometrium of the uterus and it opens into the uterine cavity okay let's see the blood supply into the uterine tube uh, the uterine artery and ovarian artery these are the two arteries that which bring or supply oxygenated blood to the uterine tube bringing oxygenated blood from the arteries and these arteries include um, uterine artery and ovarian artery they bring oxygenated blood from the arterial system then uh, ovarian vein and int internal iliac vein these are the two veins they that they drain deoxygenated from uh, blood from the uterine tube the deoxygenated carbon dioxide uh, rich blood needed to be uh, are drained from the uterine tube and they are being drained by ovarian vein and internal iliac vein so uterine artery and ovarian artery uh, supplying oxygenated blood to the uterine tube 
wear in vain and uh, internal iliac vein draining deoxygenated blood from the uterine tube uh, now the structure of the uterine tube and the st structure it includes uh, three layers of tissues the wall of the uterine tube is formed of three layers of tissue and the outermost layer is a layer of peritoneum peritoneum is a serous membrane the largest serous membrane that cover all organs of the abdominal and pelvic cavity here this peritoneum is covering the outer um, part of the uterine tube and in the middle layer it consists of smooth muscle a middle layer of smooth muscle and in that the, uh, there is an inner circular muscle fiber and outer longitudinal muscle fibers can be seen uh, in the uterine tube inner there are circular muscle fibers and an outer uh, longitudinal muscle fibers which are been uh, seen there okay so and the inner layer of mucosa there are three layers an inner layer and a middle layer and an outer layer this outer layer is of peritoneum and the middle layer is of uh, smooth muscle which itself include two layer uh, two layers of muscle fibers okay and uh, the inner layer the innermost layer is mucosa and in it to that there is space and that is the lumen of the uh, uterine tube the inner layer of the mucosa is lined with ciliated columnar epithelium there are hair like uh, projections in over the surface of the columnar epithelium which helps in the movement of ova then spermatozoa zygote and all okay so there are uh, three mm, layers in the wall of the uterine tube outer layer of peritoneum middle layer of smooth muscle and an inner layer of uh, mucosa lined with ciliated columnar epithelium let's discuss about its functions so it connects the peritoneal cavity with the uterine cavity this is the connecting link between the peritoneal cavity and the um, uterine cavity so this is uh, here is the peritoneum and this peritoneal cavity is getting connected uh, uh, with the uterine cavity with the help of the uterine tube okay it connects the peritoneal cavity with the uterine cavity and they, they take uh, place uh, peristaltic movements uh, wave like movements are uh, in the uterine tube uh, that helps to move the ovum from the ovary into the uterus it moves it from the uh, ovary into the uterus it uh, catches the ovum the fimbria catches the ovum and it uh, the peristaltic movements in the wall of the uterine tube helping it to move from uh, the ovary into the uterus it helps the ovum to get into the uterus through the peristaltic movement these peristaltic movements occurs uh, uh, due to the uh, muscular rhythmic contractions of the muscular wall of the uterine uh, tube okay the middle muscular layer of the uterine tube hel helps in peristaltic movements and this peristaltic movement helps in moving the ovum from the ovary into the uterus and uh, the mucus secreted by the mucosa the innermost layer uh, which is the mucosa secreting mucus that assists in the movement of the spermatozoa and as well as the ova it helps in the movement this mucus secreted by the mucosa and the ciliated uh, columnar epithelium the cilia present uh, in the mucosa also helping in uh, pushing it forward from the ovary um, into the uterine cavity okay the fertilization usually takes place in the uterine tube fertilization usually takes place at the ampulla of the uterine uterine tube and um, after fertilization before its implantation into okay the fertilization usually takes place in the uterine tube and after the fertilization uh, and before Im its implantation into the endometrium of the uterus uh, it ha it needs nourishment and that nourishment is provided by the uh, uh, uterine tube uh, through its secretions and the uterine tube provides nourishment to the fertilized ovum and after the fertilization the zygote moves uh, into the uterus for its implantation through the uterine tube the zygote also moves uh, and enters into the uterine cavity so it enters into the uterine cavity 
and for its implantation into the endometrium so the movement is also been assisted the movement of the zygote is also assisted uh, by the uh, secretions of the uterine tube as well as the ciliated columnar epithelium that pushes it forward and for its implantation into the endometrium of the uterus and that was about the functions so this is the connecting link between the peritoneal cavity and the uterine cavity there is uh, movements in the wall uh, with the help of the muscular layer those uh, those movements are called peristaltic movement which helps in the movement of ova spermatozoa uh, and the zygote okay and the mucus secreted by the mucosa which will help in the uh, smooth movement of spermatozoa ova and the zygote through the uterine tube then fertilization usually takes place in the uterine tube and after fertilization that fertilized ovum uh, is provided nourishment by the uterine tube and uh, after the fertilization the zygote moves through the uterine tube uh, for its implantation into the uh, endometrium of the uterus so today we have discussed about the uterine tube or the fallopian tube we have uh, discussed about its introduction then now uh, we have seen its diagram then uh, we have gone through the parts which include fimbria infundibulum then ampulla and the isthmus then uh, we have seen the diagram then the blood supply uterine artery and ovarian artery then ovarian vein and internal iliac vein then uh, we have discussed about its structure um, outer peritoneum middle muscular layer and inner mucosa and we have discussed about its uh, functions and that's all about uh, uterine tube and thank you very